Welcome to the Hardcore Closer Podcast. I'm Ryan Steumann, founder of HardcoreCloser.com, and this podcast is all about helping you, the salesperson, close more sales. And look, whether you're selling cars, homes, financial services, consulting, whatever it is that you sell, this podcast is dedicated to help you generate higher quality leads, increase your closing ratios, and show you how to charge premium fees for the items you sell so you can get paid what you're worth. What's up, Closer Nation? Welcome to episode 85 of the Hardcore Closer podcast, and I am so glad you're here. If you're a first-timer, be sure and check out previous episodes. There's at least 84 of them. And uh, look, I'm going to I'm gonna need you to pay your way around here, right? This is not a free restaurant. This isn't UNICEF. This is not a welfare check. Uh, and what we do is we ask that you, uh, you vote with your stars, right? Like you, instead of opening your wallet, which is nice, we've got plenty of shit you can buy as well. Uh, but I'm asking you on this particular show to go over to the podcast in iTunes, uh, whether you be on your iPhone or if you go through iTunes on your laptop or your desktop or or whatever top that you're using, and uh, and leave a review. You listen to the show on a regular basis. I, every week, consistently, you can count on me to be here to put out 30 minutes or so of content that will help you become a better salesperson, a, a better human being, a a, a stronger mental uh, advocate of whatever the hell that you want to become, right? Like I've got you every single week. We come up with stuff to help you out. All I'm asking you is in return, do your motherfucking part and leave me a review. Like uh, right here, it says what you didn't know you needed for sales success. Five stars by JJJGDDHJBVF. See, I don't even give a shit if you use a real username or not. <laughs> and like you could just type in whatever the hell. Uh, but this was uh, October 7th. So this was just a few days ago. It says, great advice given in every episode told in an interesting and entertaining way. This is the type of content you typically pay to read in someone's book, yet Ryan delivers it live for free and with a passion that's simply contagious. Give it a shot and you will not be disappointed. That's what I'm talking about, JJJGGGDGJVBF, whatever your, your name is. I appreciate that. Also, remember, if you leave me a five-star review, you can – Talk about, you don't have to talk about how awesome the show is. Leave me a five-star review and you can pitch your damn business. And uh, we've done that plenty of times on the air here as well. I am a salesman. I want you to make money and you to make sales as well. So before we get into the content, I want to share some stuff with you. Uh, I mean, you listen to this show every single week because you're in sales and you appreciate the value the show brings to your life and the the energy maybe that, that I drop on you every single week and the tips and strategies and you implement this stuff and you, you go out and you make money for yourself and the company that you work for and maybe the team that you represent. And every, every month you start all over. Every month you find yourself repeating the same things. You're always looking for uh, the next best thing, right? I, I see guys that were in the mortgage business that once the bubble popped, they were you know, into the payroll business. And then once the payroll boom slowed down, then they were in the 401k business. Once the 401k business slowed down, they got back into insurance. And like, I see people just chasing the trends. And there's nothing wrong with that. There, but it's not sustainable uh, long term. I mean, like, especially in insurance, you know, if you can't just be an insurance agent for a couple of years and expect it to get rich, that's a long term residual play that you're making right there. It uh, takes a while to warm up your real estate and your mortgage business as well. Whatever it is that you're doing, it takes a while to, to build a pipeline. And, you know, uh, often in our jobs, we have busy times of the year and, and slow times of the year. And so, you know, as salespeople, we're always looking for side hustles. That's one of the great things about us is we're always looking for side hustles and we're always looking for the next trend that we can go sell and make money on. Right now, it's like solar and, uh, and roofing is huge right now. Real estate here in North Texas is huge. Like that's the big bubbles that are going right now. But there's also a bubble that a lot of people don't know about uh, in the sales world because it's like this big tech geek secret. And that's called uh, a sales funnel, right? Like every business in America, especially, but in the world for sure, but in America specifically, every business needs a funnel. And what a sales funnel is, it's a collection of websites that sell an offer to the person visiting the website. So if you showed up on a website and the website says, in order to get X, Y, Z from us, would you give us your name, email address, and phone number? We'll give it to you. And so that's what the sales funnel does. Well, that person gives you their name, phone number, and email address to get X, Y, Z from you. Then all of a sudden you have a lead. 
and leads are the lifeblood of any business, whether it's sales business or any business. Like without, even in sales, like if you don't have leads, you don't make any sales. Who are you going to talk to? If you don't have no one to talk to, you can't make any sales. In business, leads are the lifeblood. And so what a sales funnel does is it generates leads for a business, whereas a website simply just generates attention, right? It's like, hey, here we are. Here's our address. Here's our phone number if you want to call us. A sales funnel is a website that generates leads, right? It's like collecting people's names, email information, and phone number. And I'll tell you this. I saw an article on uh, Motley Fool this week that said data is the most expensive resource in the world right now. It's even more expensive than uh, oil. And a lead is data. When you think about that, that's what you have. You have data on someone. You got their name, email address, and phone number. And if you give a shit enough, if you care enough, you can take that name, email address, and phone number. You can find their social media profiles, their home address, like everything. Everything's tied back usually to one of those three things, name, email address, and mobile phone number. So you can track back, and all of a sudden you have data. And my friends that make big money that have these huge corporations, they uh, they, they say that if, uh, if you don't have data, you really don't have data. If you don't have data, you really don't have a business, sorry. And... I even have friends that have sold businesses and the business not really even make that much money, but sell it for millions of dollars just because the amount of data the the business has collected. And so sales funnels, that's what they do is they, they create the lead. They collect the data, the, the biggest, most expensive resource we have right now. That's what sales funnels do. The problem is most business owners don't know they exist, but when they see them, they want one. And most of the people that make these sales funnels, they have about, the same sales skills as uh, as your as your your pet dog, right? Like no sales skills whatsoever. That's what I'm saying. So anyway, that's a terrible analogy. But y'all just keep going with me. The tech geeks they suck. They're not salespeople, and so there's this disconnect. You've got this this huge demand and this product that that can help a lot of business owners, but then you don't have uh, anybody to sell it or to let the business owners know. It's it's funny. I always say, you know, people say, "Oh, we'd the world be so much better without salespeople." I'm like, really? Because if it wasn't for us, there'd be a bunch of cool shit that existed that nobody would know about. And I kind of feel like that's what's up with sales funnels. It's like they're really cool. They do an awesome job. They've made me a millionaire. And they've made a lot of my friends millionaires as well. But yet most business owners don't know anything about them. And so here's what I'd like to share with you today is you can learn how to sell these sales funnels without having to build a website, without tech skills, without any of that stuff. You can learn how to sell them to these small business owners uh, by going to Funnel Closer. Dot com. Uh, there's a free training there. It's about a 90-minute training that uh, puts everything together for you, shows you, walks you step-by-step step through the entire process on how to sell, upload structure deals, all that right there at FunnelCloser.com. Make sure you head over there and check it out. Let's jump into uh, this week's episode, shall we? We're going to talk about email marketing. So we got five proven tips for closing more deals with email. So first, let me share my theory, my opinion, my stance on selling with you so that we're clear for the context of this episode. So most people will tell you, oh, I'm good on the phone, man. I'm good on the phone. I'm good face to face, man. Yeah, yeah. No, you get me in front of somebody, man. I'll close them. You get me on the phone with somebody, I'll close them. And being on the phone or being a good salesperson on the phone and being a good salesperson face to face, those those are awesome, right? That's awesome. Good for you. But that's like knowing karate. You just know you you know karate. Like good. You could go out and you can kick some ass because you know karate. You might even be a black belt. But guess what? Somebody who can sell from the phone, through text message, through email, on video, on the stage, face to face, in a network, social setting, like in a group. However, if someone can sell everywhere, it's like somebody knowing mixed martial arts. Yeah, they know karate, but they know Brazilian jiu-jitsu, Aikido, and kickboxing as well. And we all know that if you watch a UFC fight, if somebody goes in and they're really, and they're only good at like one of those martial arts, they get their ass handed to them. You have to know karate, you got to know boxing, you got to know kickboxing, you got to know Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you need to know wrestling, you need to know grappling. Like that's the world that we live in. We don't live in a world of karate. We live in a world where you need to be in the sales world right now. You need to be a mixed martial artist. 
You need to be able to close from the phone, through text, in the DM, on video, through webinars, from the stage. You need to know all of it. And if you don't know all of it and you call yourself a sales master, you're full of shit. Because if you really got a black belt in sales, it's a black belt in mixed martial arts of sales. It's everything. You see, anybody can be good at the phone. It's like all I do is I just practice the phone. That's it. I'm just a phone closer. And that's awesome. But I think anybody can set their sights on being good just through one modality. A true badass is somebody who can close across all, all platforms. And so email being one of those. And a lot of people, they'll use email to try to get somebody on the phone. It's like, Joel, I'm a phone closer, man. I'm using the email to get them on the phone. And while that may work, it's highly inefficient because here's the thing. If you get good at writing, which is the way that thing, most things are sold these days anyway, I'll explain in a second. But if you get good at writing, that's where the real sales comes in because if you can write good, you can speak good. So if you can write good, you can speak good. And guess what? The better you get at writing, the better you get at selling. But here's the thing. Most people, they hate it. They say they, it's like they're trying to buck the trend. Everybody wants to buy stuff via text, via email. But salespeople, majority of them are like, no, man, we need to get on the phone. Fuck getting on the phone. Sell where they want to be sold at. If they want to be sold through email, sell them through fucking email. If they want you to text message back and forth with them, don't ask them to get on the fucking phone. That's fucking stupid. The prospect's telling you how they want to give you the money and you're trying to get them to do some other shit. That's fucking bad sales. It's bad sales. Bad salesman. Bad salesman. You want to be able to close across all platforms. Well, email's huge and email isn't just made to get somebody on the phone. I close half a million dollars a year from email marketing and without talking to a single person, without getting a single person on phone, just from email marketing. And so I'm going to give you five proven tips to close through email, but I don't want you to discredit it. The whole, the point of email is not to get somebody on the phone. The point of email is to be able to sell through text. People prefer to be sold through text. If you think about it, the internet's been around so long now that people read an article and they make a decision if they want to buy something or not. Uh, the number one retailer in the world is Amazon. And if Amazon is the number one retailer in the world, they don't have people get on the phone with them. Matter of fact, does anybody know the number? Robert, anybody? Y'all know the number to Amazon? Hey, somebody get me the fucking number to Amazon. Get Jeff Bezos on the phone. Don't happen. People buy trillions of dollars of shit a year from Amazon and all through text. And so when you tell me, well, what I sell, you got to be on the phone. Nah, probably not. And well, I sell the rich people. Well, rich people hate the phone. They got less time to get on the phone. So I'm going to talk to you today about email. Step number one, five tips, five proven tips for closing more deals with email. Step number one is make the headline pop. The first, like the close is a grand finale in a series of smaller sales. And the first sale is to get them to open the email. And that's what the headline or, or the subject line in this case, I call it the headline, but it's the subject line. If we're going to get all like technical and formal and shit, <laughs> but it's the, the, the headline that makes all the difference in the world. The headline sells them on opening the email. And you've got to make it pop. You've got to say something. What I like is uh, something that's triggering or something that is uh, confirming, which I'll explain both of them. Something's triggering, something's confirming, or something that is uh, 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 so triggering, confirm. What is my third step? You know, that happens sometimes. You sit over here and you, you, uh, you don't really take very good notes when you start a show. And you're like, oh, shit, man, but there was three things. But so you, you want to confirm people, you want to trigger them, and you want to also question them. There we go. There's that third one. It came back to me eventually. So first thing is we want to confirm. So like if somebody's opted in and they've opted in for a book or a free ebook or a video or whatever, uh, I make the headline pop with a confirmation. One of my biggest opens on my email subject lines, which we've done a lot of sales from like you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales, is a thing that says confirmation your order processed. And uh, they don't buy shit from me, but people open it up going, oh, dude, he, he somehow he managed to get money from me. And then they read it and they're like, oh, this is brilliant. I'm going to buy some shit from him. He didn't get money from me. 
And, and that's triggering too, right? Because that, that triggers people. They're like, what? This dude stole from me. And so it's confirming and triggering if you think about it. Like that's why that, that particular headline that we use um, works so well. Uh, and we get hate mail all the time from it. It's like, I knew you guys were thieves. You got in my wallet, blah, blah. I was like, bro, read the fucking email. If you don't give us your credit card, we ain't that good at sales that we can just like mind fuck your credit card out of your back pocket, you fucking moron. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you got to make the headline pop, right? So you want to be triggering, uh, which is something that's shocking, right? You won't believe what happened here. Or, hey, maybe it's time you quit your job in sales, Ryan, right? So like something that's triggering, something that's like, this motherfucker, I'm going to open this up, reply to this motherfucker. But before they get a reply, they got to read because they got to get the context of what you're selling. And then the third one is questions, uh, you know, hey, have you seen this, Ryan? Hey, Ryan, what do you think about this? Like asking somebody a question and then they've got to open the email to see the confirmation, uh, see what the hell the question is. So think about that. You need a headline that pops. So you need something that's confirming, something that's triggering, uh, something that is questioning or a combination uh, thereof. Number two is follow the 80-20 rule. So when you write an email, 80% needs to be for the benefit of the prospect. 20% needs to be a sales pitch. So you always want to follow the 80-20 rule. You like, and, and the 80-20 rule is universal. If you look on Google, 20% of the, the text on Google is an ad. If you look on Facebook, one in every five posts is an ad. It's the 80-20 rule. Uh, the best email marketers, 80% meet, 20% buy my shit. And so that's how you need to structure your stuff too. It's like that first sale, boom, you got the headline, they open it up, then you need 80% about them, right? There's a benefit for them opening it up. And then the 20% needs to be the actual sales pitch. And so you're going to have 80% of the content of that email is to the benefit of the customer, 20% is to the benefit of you. That 20% has to count. But when you write an email, you want to follow that 80-20 rule because most people, they'll write you know, 100% sales pitch. And a sales pitch in the email is as welcomed as a sales pitch face-to-face. -face. People put their guard up. Matter of fact, with an email, they can just simply not reply. So you want to make sure that you follow the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 for them, 20% for you. Number three, always, always, always include a call to action. So whatever you're going to 80% of your content, 20% is a sales pitch. Part of that 20% sales pitch needs to be the next step. Click a link, buy my stuff, order the program, set up a time for us to come by, set up a consultation, whatever it is that that call to action, that next step. Because in the email, we're trying to make the headline pop so they open it. We're trying to 80-20 them so that they read our stuff. And then after they've got through the 20% sales pitch, we're going to give them a call to action so they take the next step in the buying process with us. But if you send an email out and you don't have a call to action, then you really didn't send a sales email, you sent a newsletter, right? Every, like if you don't have a sales pitch, right? If you don't have a call to action in your sales pitch, then it's not really a sales pitch. It's just information you're sharing with somebody. So number three, always include a call to action in your email. Don't email just for the sake of email and email for the sake of asking them to press forward and take the next logical step in the buying process. Number four, tell a story. Most people, they get too technical in their emails. Tell a story. You know, instead of saying, hey, hey, Ryan, we have 40% off, which will save you $30,000 a year. Just give me a call. Instead, tell a story. It's like, hey, Ryan, did you hear about my client, Robert? Robert runs a textile business just like you. And what happened with Robert was he decided to implement our strategies. And we uh, were able to save him $30,000 uh, off the price because we got a special going right now, which enabled him to turn around, implement our stuff, and immediately make $80,000 in this business. Would you like to learn how Robert did this? Then here's the call to action, right? So tell the story. and. Number five really ties into number four is when you're telling that story, poke at their problem. That's number five. Poke at the problem. That story should be poking at their problem. Here's Robert. He was struggling. Here's Ryan. Here's Ryan's client, Robert. He was struggling with money. We gave him a discount. He took action. He fixed his problem. 
But you could poke at that problem even more. The reason why I didn't have money is because this has happened in the past. And these circumstances, like good sales copy, consist of that problem. And part of that is knowing your perfect customer. Knowing exactly who it is that you want to sell to so that you know what their problem is so that you can poke at it. And by poking at their problem, I mean, when you go into the doctor and you tell the doctor your elbow hurts, he doesn't start feeling your leg. I mean, unless like he's one of those kind of doctors. It's like, uh, allow me to get the uh, anesthesia going here, young lady. Um, what was the, the doctor that was doing that shit, man? The uh, like famous one. It's like, uh, I think it was the same guy. It was like Michael Jackson's doctor, right? It's like it was passing people out, Bill Cosby style and shit. Anyway, uh, but you want to, um, got a little sidetrack there with the old Bill Cosby sidetrack. It's just fucking, there's putting jokes in here somewhere, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm just going to let this, uh, let this pass. This too shall pass. We'll keep rolling. So you want to poke at their problem. When you go into the doctor, the doctor doesn't feel your leg. When you tell them your elbow hurts, they start feeling your elbow. They start poking at your problem so that they can solve it. You have to do the same thing through email. You have to poke at their problem. Since my client was in the same situation as you because of XYZ circumstances, here's how he beat it. Would you like my help beating it as well? So let's go over five proven tips for closing deals with emails one more time. Number one, make the headline pop. The headline is the most important, the subject line, whatever you want to call it, the most important part of the email. If they if the headline sucks, they won't open your email and the rest of the fucking email is useless. So I need you to think about this when when you write a, 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 a subject line, when you write a headline, make that thing pop to where it's hard for them to resist opening it. Remember, you can use triggering, confirming or questioning as uh, is, is ways to get them to open it up. That very first sale. Remember, I said the, the close is the grand finale in a series of smaller sales. That very first sale is open, read this headline and open the email accordingly. Number two, follow the 80-20 rule, 80% for them. So when you're telling your story, which is number four, we'll get to that in a minute, but when you're telling your story, 80% of that story is related to them, 20% is your sales pitch. Don't get it backwards, don't twist it, don't fuck the the ratio up, 80% them, 20% sales pitch. Number three, make sure in that 20% sales pitch that you always include a call to action. Always be nudging them to the next step in the sales process. Sometimes it's to close and give you money. Sometimes it's to set up an appointment. Sometimes it's to set up a consultation, whatever the case may be. Always include a call to action. Number four, make sure you tell a story, right? Don't just use logic and numbers, that stuff. That's not, people read fiction books at hundreds of times the rates that they read nonfiction books because fucking nonfiction numbers are boring. You tell a story, they'll read that shit. Number five, in that story, make sure that you poke at their problem. Now, if you realize, like if you listen to this show and you think about this, all these five things are intertwined together to make out basically the perfect email. And you should follow them every time. They can make out the perfect email sequence. And so right now, if you're one of these people that, that's karate, you know, you're just really good at, at you know, getting on the phone with somebody, you need to start writing every day. In 2012, I told myself, that I had to get better at writing. I read a copywriting book by from a gentleman named Mike Dillard called uh, Magnetic Sponsoring. And I knew at that moment that I had to fucking, I had to get good at writing. And so I made the pledge to start writing 5,000 words a day. And I've been writing at least 5,000 words a day every day since then. And that's what's allowed me to get good. I just made the decision to become that thing. Okay, dude, that's it. I'm texting, I'm emailing, I'm writing blog posts. I'm going to be a good writer. Because I'm not just going to be that guy that's good face to face. We live in a world where we have Skype and Google Hangouts and 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 direct messages on Facebook and FaceTime. Like we don't have to get face to face. We don't have to shake hands belly to belly with people anymore. People are reading websites and making million dollar decisions all day, every day. I want to be in on that. You should too, because that's the way things are working. People are communicating with their mouths less and less, and they're communicating with their eyes and their thumbs and fingertips more. And more. An email is a very powerful way uh, to make sales. So uh, make sure you go over to elevator to the top and dot com and grab a free copy of my best selling sales book, Elevator to the Top, uh, at elevator to the top dot com. And if you haven't been over to funnelcloser dot com, get over there, sign up, watch that training. It's mind blowing. I want to help you, the salesperson. 
make a bunch of money from that as well. Thank you for hanging out this week. Make sure you share this with somebody who needs to start emailing their prospects so that they can make some money. And we'll catch you next week right here on the Closer Nation, the Hardcore Closer Podcast. I'm out.